All right, praise the Lord. Hope everybody's doing okay. And you know what? Let me tell you about my life. Everything happens when it's time for me to go live. I mean, everything happens. So I had to um, settle the house, deal with phone calls. I don't know. It's just weird. But anyway, welcome to Prophetic Bible Studies. I'm your host and your teacher for the next hour, maybe hour and a half. I'm Apostle Delisa. Uh, if you don't know me by now, you'll find out that I have a passion for the Word of God. I have been studying the Word since I was 13 and have several um, uh, degrees behind that uh, because I take um, the assignment to teach very seriously. And so I have invested in it. But above and beyond all of that, um, the Holy Spirit is the ultimate teacher. OK, so let's, I'll never get it twisted. I don't care how many. Uh, accomplishments or what my accomplishments have looked like in life, nothing can compare to the teacher, the Holy Ghost. So I give him glory and give him honor for all things. If you have not had a chance to read Genesis chapter 32, this teaching is going to be a, um, oh, it's going to be a tremendous blessing. So let me try to just mute my TV um, so we don't have too much background noise. Um, I'm recording live from home. So I'm just disclaimer. I've got dogs and I've got kids. So I don't know what you guys may hear, but just pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. So good morning. God bless you. Good evening. Good afternoon, depending on what time of day that you will be tuning in. And we're going to go ahead and get started. OK, um, again, I apologize for any background noise in advance because, um, you know, I just don't know what may <laughs> what may happen. So give me a few minutes. And let me get um, everything pulled up for you. All right. So we're talking about Genesis um, chapter 32 and. Um, hold on. Yeah, Genesis chapter 32, trying to monitor comments at the same time. Uh, yeah. All right. Genesis chapter 32. All right. So it, it, again, if you're familiar with the way that we do it, I'm not going to read the entire chapter to you um, because God has enabled us to read and um so i'm going to pull out some highlights okay like i did with the last one for 31 i'll pull some highlights out and um and we'll look at that and so when we talk about prophetic bible studies we are not just reading the word of god but we are studying it with the ear to hear what the spirit of god is saying to the church all right so we're not just reading it and and and, and having a discussion about um you know the context or, or not the context but the literal translation, but we want to hear the rhema. What is God saying right now? How does Genesis 32, how does that apply to me right now? So get your Bibles, get your notebooks, get your devices ready, and let's get started. All right. In Genesis chapter 32, verses one through five. Um, wait a minute, let me check my stuff here. Okay, good. All right. Genesis chapter 32, verses one through five. Um, and I will open with that. Okay. But I, I, I'm, I promise you, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. All right, Genesis um, 32, 1 through 5. And I like to, I like to, my style of studying the word of God is to break it into small digestible pieces. Um, and I found that to be very helpful in terms of not being overwhelmed with so much information, especially Old Testament. Um, I love history, so it's not a big issue for me, but there may be some who stumble in this area. So it's, it's always good when you're studying, um, particularly the Old Testament. The New Testament is more narrative. But well, the Old Testament is is um, historical. And so it helps to break things down and, and, and section it in the smaller pieces. It makes it more palatable. You can digest it and it's, it makes um, better sense. OK, so you'll find throughout all of my studies and I'm, I'm now incorporating. I'm using this as a best practice to do a PowerPoint um, because it, there are and as an educator, there are people who have different learning styles. Some people learn better with audio, some learn visual, some are better kinesthetic learners, what have you. So I'm giving an audio and a visual. So that way we can kind of marry those pieces and, and get you guys um, you know, caught up into to what God is saying for you. So let's read. I'm going to read the first five verses, okay? But the, my topic is, and I've titled this, Warfare and God Fear, these first five verses, okay? So, and Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, um, the count country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall you speak unto my lord Esau, thy servant Jacob said, Thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. 
And I have oxen and asses and flocks and men servants and women servants, and I have sent them to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. Okay. Um, so in on the heel of Genesis 31, if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, you really, really, really do. It's posted on the Facebook page, but it's also everything is uploaded to YouTube as well. So I've got that link um, at the top of the page. You can go and, and, and listen to it because it's going to help you make sense um, with in terms of, of, you know, why Jacob is in this predicament that he's in right now. Um, it, it's always good to kind of, you know, keep a seamless flow when it comes to the word of God. So we find here that Jacob went on his way. You need to know where he went on his way from. Jacob was leaving. Um, for those who listen in on a Genesis 31, uh, he was leaving the Mizpah, the Mizpah covenant, where Laban said, you know, uh, basically we're going to depart on amicable, amicable terms. You don't harm me. I won't harm you. And so Jacob went on his own way. OK, so it's, again, it's important for you to have an understanding of what took place in Genesis 31 so that you'll understand where Jacob is in Genesis 32 and why God dealt with him the way that he did. You know, if you're coming from it from the backside, you won't understand. And you'll think, man, God is being cruel. God is being mean. But you've you got to understand the history. And people will do that in your own life. They, they, they have no idea of what your story, story is, what your journey has been like. And they'll come in on the present chapter having no clue of, you know, what you had been through. or You know what I'm saying? What your experience had been like before. And so you can't judge a person, you know, based upon their present reality because you don't understand what it took for them to get where they are. OK, so you want to be mindful about that. So here in, in Genesis chapters, um, verse chapter 32, one through five, this is we're coming into a place where Jacob is being set up. All right. So after Jacob leaves from Laban and there was warfare with Laban, but God showed Laban, this is my this is my man of God. Don't you touch him. Don't touch nothing that he has. X, Y, Z. And so Laban yields to that and he, he releases Jacob on his way. Jacob leaves with his family and so forth. But Jacob comes to this place. So I, I often teach my church family and many of them are listening. Bless the love church, Charlotte, all of our guests and listeners. I bless God for you. Um, there are some strong messages that God is going to reveal to you. So I want you to pay attention um, and, and don't miss what God is saying. So, you know, after Jacob successfully, successfully, that's key. After he successfully confronted Laban, he did it. Remember, I told you guys how Laban mistreated him, changed his wages 10 times, deceived him into marrying the older daughter, all of that, all of that. But Jacob endured it. Jacob went through it. Jacob didn't fight back. Jacob didn't do evil for evil. Jacob, he, 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 he suffered through it because people will tell you, oh, you don't have to put up with that. There's some things, friends, you do have to put up with in order for God to set you up for where he needs you to need you to go. And some of that is some boot camp. Some of that is some training. Some of that is some seed sowing that God is doing in you to produce the God, the character that he wants to come out of you. So, yeah, you do. There are some things you do have to put up with for where God is taking you and what he has in you that he's pulling out. Jacob had to go through that with Laban to prepare him for this hour. So Jacob now is on his way and listen to what the Bible said in verse one. And the angels of God met him. This is what happens when many of you are coming out of intense seasons of spiritual warfare and conflict. God will send angels to minister to you for several reasons. Number one, God is going to, and I have here for point one, the ministry of angels will come to comfort you. Think about that even in Jesus' time. Whenever Jesus would do, go through warfare or teaching and he's dealing with the scribes and Pharisees, religious rulers of his day, he would take time away and the spirit, the angels of God would minister to him, would restore him. And so many times you find after you've done ministering or preaching or praying and you lose virtue, these are seasons when you're very vulnerable to attack. You're very vulnerable to attack. You're very vulnerable to, uh, you know, things out in the atmosphere, Roman spirits looking to find some place to 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 land. You're very vulnerable. So it's important. And this is scripture. Genesis, top of Genesis 32. You can't you can't make this stuff up. Soon as he finishes his season of warfare with Laban, God releases angels to minister to him. And so even with you, when you're coming out of seasons of conflict, seasons of challenge, seasons of warfare, God will send angels to minister to you, to comfort you. Number one, God will also send angels because, listen, there's a changing of the guards. I often talk about that. There's a changing of the guards. You're leaving territories. You're leaving regions. You're going from process to process. My daughter, Pastor Jacob said, and you're going from, from glory to glory, faith to faith. You, you're entering into another level, another domain, another uh, um, an, another another place. 
And, and so the angels that governed Jacob while he was uh, in the camp of Laban, now Jacob is in another place. And so the angels of God are meeting him there. Y'all, this is so important, this heavenly, divine, angelic interse intersection. When you're changing and going through different seasons, you want to go with God. I mean, they say go with God, Crispy. My daughter says that. But you want to go with God. You want to make sure that those angels are there to help you in that transition because some folk just go. They haven't been. They just went. They were not sent. You want to make sure that the presence of God goes before you. The word of God said, I will go before you. So the angels of God met him there. And again, and here's the prophetic piece because I'm, I'm stuck in Genesis 1. That's how, I mean, verse 1. This is how this works, y'all. But with that, um, if Jacob traveled in the wrong direction, there would have been no angels. So it's not so much you leaving from point A to point B, but it's also when you're transitioning from point A to point B that you are following God. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, making sure your steps are ordered. The angels are where your steps are ordered. The angels are not where you want to go. The angels are not where you think you need to go. The angels are not where, and you look at Lot, for example, the angels were not in Sodom and Gomorrah. Those were demons of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And so God had to send angels there. But guess what? They could not go except Abraham permitted them to go in prayer. So God, listen, y'all, this is some phenomenal stuff. Okay, so the angels, the ministry of angels came to comfort Jacob um, from the last storm that he in, endured with uh, um, Laban. And they're also there to strengthen him for the next season. Did you hear that? They, they come and they, they're sober, serving a multi. Remember, Jacob, in, initially, and we talked about Beth, Bethel last week a little bit, um, how when, when Jacob was leaving his father's house, he was leaving Isaac's house, going to Laban's house, he saw the angels. Do you notice at every incremental point of Jacob's life, there was angelic intervention, angelic intersection? And y'all going to love this by the time I get done, if you can hang on. Um, you're going to love this. So there's going to be that angelic intervention. You don't want to go nowhere without it. You don't want to do nothing without it. Trust me. So they're there now. OK, they say, you know what? You've gone through this with Laban. You've gone through all these years of suffering, what have you. Now you're going into another season. You need to be strengthened for this. You don't ever want to come out of a season of conflict and, 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 and enter into another season without the strength of the Lord, without the peace of the Lord, without the joy of the Lord, because you're going to operate that in your flesh and you're going to make terrible, terrible mistakes in that. OK. So this speaks to that proof that angelic intervention was validation. They it gave proof that Jacob had indeed followed that process. He followed the instructions of the Lord. He endured the hardship. He endured the warfare. And meeting those angels was proof that God was with him. All right. So now the place in verse two is, is Mahanaim. OK, this word means double camps or excuse me, two camps or double. So you see that now. As a result of lay, uh, 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 Jacob and during that season, the angels arrived, uh, 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 revealed themselves to him in a place called double. I don't, you, you don't even have to have the Holy Ghost to know what that means. In, in, in context, there's double for your shame, double for your, your trouble, double, you know what I'm saying? And, and the same thing God did with, with, uh, with Job and twice more than what he had. And so Jacob now is entering into a pivotal phase. And that's why I titled this message the paradigm shift, because some tremendous things are about to happen in the man of God's life. But it's not just going to fall. It's not just going to fall out the sky and just you, you got to go through something to get it. OK, so just prepare yourself and get ready for it. So he's in this place called double a place of two camps. Now I want you to pay attention to that. All right. The Mahanaim, the place of two camps, the word Hebrew in Hebrew means double. So Jacob in verse four and five. Jacob attempts to make peace with Esau because remember what God told Jacob in 31, I want you to return to your father's home, go back home. Well, Jacob realized I didn't leave on good terms. Remember we talked about that last week too, leaving with a good benediction because you never know who you got to return to, who you're going to need. You never know. This life is funny, y'all. This life is funny. So we, we, as the saints of God, as the people of God, we have to get a hold to our emotions and our feelings so that we're not making decisions based upon how we feel and end up cutting ourselves out of a blessing that we didn't know we would need. OK, so God is telling him, Jacob, you got to go back. Guess what? You uh, you didn't leave on good terms. As a matter of fact, you left running for your life. His mother, Rebecca, said you need to leave because your brother Esau is going to kill you. And so now God is telling him, I want you to go back. So fear gripped. And these are why the angels came. Fear gripped Jacob. OK. And it happened. 
many times when, for many of us, definitely for me, when you're you know embarking upon a new season, it's an unknown thing. You know you heard God, you didn't miss God, but you just you know like okay, Lord, I I didn't I'm not really sure, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle it. I don't know. I didn't leave on good terms. You know our relationship is not like it used to be, and you know I've changed. They've changed, and God, you telling me to go back to that. So there's some there's some anxiety there. There's a little bit of reluctance there. There's some apprehension and definitely some fear entered in with Jacob. It's going to happen. OK, but let's look at how how he handled it. So Jacob now is attempting to make peace with Esau before he returns home. Uh, life has humbled him. Remember, he went through a whole lot. Right. Because your deeds will find you out. Your, your, your stuff. What Jacob did to Esau was wrong. Point blank. That was wrong. He deceived him. And, 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 and there had to be recompense made for that. Jacob suffered a lot as a, he didn't leave home with, the, uh, on, with the, the blessing from his parents like he should have. It, it was sort of like a, a forced blessing, if that's a word. So he didn't leave on really good terms, but now he's having to return. So Jacob is trying to make peace with Esau before he returns home. He's humble. He refers to himself as a servant in, um, in verse four, okay? And, and he, he his wealth, the Bible says he goes into, I've got all this oxen and asses and flocks and men servants. In other words, he's trying to, um, you know, what he wants Esau to realize is, hey, I'm not coming back to take anything. And people will think that, oh, what you what you coming back into my life for? You want something, you, what have you. And so Jacob is like, is trying to convey to, I, um, to, to Esau, I'm not coming to take anything. I, I, it, here's what I have. I have my own wealth. I've got my own family. I've got my own stuff. I'm not after an inheritance. I just want to come home. OK. And so in that, Jacob is 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 trying to um, bring peace between him and Esau before he actually gets there. So he doesn't go himself. He sends somebody. Y'all know that word. He sends his servants ahead of him to Esau to try to you know make some kind of peace treaty. Let's see how that works. So in verses six through eight. All right. We've got several points, four points here. Um, uh, so Jacob, let's see where we are on verse six, so the messengers return to Jacob. And, um, so when Jacob's messengers return from meeting with Esau, Esau tells the servants to tell Jacob, I'm coming to meet him and I'm bringing 400 of my men with me. So, listen, when you are already operating in fear, you already reluctant, you've got anxiety, you've got all kind of emotional stuff going on right now. And somebody tells you, oh, he said he, he wants to come meet you and he's bringing 400 men with him. You, you, you know, it's not unlikely for you to think, oh my God, this man is going to kill me. He's going to take, you know what I'm saying? He, he's going to kill my family. He's, I mean, you think the worst, right? Fear will have you. And uh, this whole chapter is going to really tell, talk to you a lot about the manifestations and operations of fear. So fear is telling Isaac, excuse me, Jacob, um, your brother's going to kill you. He's going to, there's going to be a whole slaughtering of your family. And so he's panicking. Okay. So Jacob assumes that Esau is coming to avenge his wrath him because Jacob stole the birthright. So Jacob assumes, and, and that's the danger in um, miscommunication. We talked about that last week um, in the last study, miscommunication in relationships, whereas somebody may be saying one thing, but you're going to interpret it based on your own experience, your own assumptions. Okay. So fear, my topic for this particular section is fear comes through the doors of assumption. You need to get some hard facts, get some knowledge, quit getting people to do stuff for you. Do it yourself. OK, if God told Jacob, I'm sending you to your family, sending you back home. Why are you sending your service? God didn't tell you to send servants. He said for you to go. Now, I understand what Jacob did. I get it as a father, as a husband, as a provider. I understand I'm not knocking what he did. But what I'm saying is that wasn't what God said. And so anytime we try to manufacture a move of God, um, we're going to come out of it with some weird stuff like what we're seeing right now. You're going to come out of it operating in fear. You're going to come out of it operating in, in spirits of flight, you know, spirits of um, manufacturing, you know, peace treaties. And you, you're going to do things in the flesh. All right. So you want to make sure that you're following this as God would have you to to follow you want to do this the way god wants you to do it okay let me pause for a minute check my comments and see where everybody is before we move forward and um yeah because we gotta we gotta get into this word we gotta see what the lord is saying all right so hold on let me check it Change. 
And for those of you just joining, welcome, welcome. We're in Genesis 32. Uh, we're in the second portion of it because I like to break it down into little smaller nuggets and um, and so forth. So uh, Jacob assumes that he's coming to execute wrath. So he springs in motion to protect his family. Again, I'm not knocking it, but that's not what God said. So fear, one thing about fear, fear will, fear will drive you to do things that um, you don't even have to do. Fear will have, well, case in point. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In its present reality, okay, um, we are dealing today is what, April 17, 2020, we're dealing with COVID-19 pandemic. And so when the onset of the news hit, there was a panic and people ran and bought toilet paper by the truckloads. So again, that fear will drive you to do things that um, it will drive you to make assumptions based upon your own you know, presuppositions. It's not based upon facts. It's based upon what you think. And uh, Sophia brings a snare to bind you up. So let's get into what's happening here with this thing with, with Jacob and Esau. So uh, the Bible says, Jacob, verse 7, 32 and 7, Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed because he's thinking his brother's going to come and kill him. OK, he devised the people. So now he puts in motion, as I said here, um, to protect his family. So he decides to send half of the family one way and, you know, one wife and her family one way and another wife and a family another way. He's trying to divide his family. He's trying to protect. Again, I'm not knocking it, but I'm just saying this is what fear. Fear will have you run, but nobody's chasing you. Fear will have you. And I've, I, some of my spiritual children are watching and, 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 and they, you know, I've seen how they operate in fear. And it's, it's quite comical. But, you know, if you don't know, if you assume something or you or if you have hear something and you take that thing and then you build, you can build revelation off of fear and my God, you're going to get the fruit of it too. And you'll find yourself thinking somebody's mad at you or somebody's feeling some kind of way about you. And it's that, that's not the case at all. But fear, again, fear will come through that door of assumption and fear will have you doing things. I mean, you just find yourself doing things, saying things, going through things that are false, uh, what false evidence appearing real. It's not real. It is a mirage. It is a stunt from the enemy to, to move you out of the place of God. Remember what I said at the top of this chapter, Jacob was at a place of transition. And so what does the enemy use to move you out of a place, move you out of place so that you can't hear God clearly? Whenever you enter into a new season, friends, whenever God is getting ready to do something new in your life, here comes fear. I can't do it. They don't like me. They don't this. I don't. And, and, and you, if you listen to it, like Jacob did here for a little bit, Jacob listened to it. If you subscribe to the voice of fear, it will delay your season of deliverance. It will delay your season of breakthrough and it will cost you. It will be very expensive. And not only that, the people in your immediate influence are going to go through it right along with you. Because if you're over them, you're in charge of them by whatever that looks like and you're telling them well let's do this let's buy tissue let's do that they're gonna they're following what you're doing they, they're following your lead so if you're supposed to be leading and, and you're panicking what do you expect those underneath you or those who are connected to you or those who are drawing influence and strength what do you expect them to do so if jacob is panicking what do you think his wife his wives and his children are going through they're panicking too so you, ha as, a, as a child of God, and you, when you know that you've heard explicitly, this is what God said, not what your flesh say, not what your feelings say, not what your favorite prophet say, but when you know in your knower that this is what God has said, and you got angelic validation proven, you've got you in the right place, you at the right time, you in the right moment, you in the, like my daughter was talking in the Kairos season of your life, you, there's no need for fear. God told Jacob, I'm sending you back to your family. So what Jacob should have done is when he crossed over, met the angels, there's a changing of the guards. The angels that escorted him from Laban have been released and the angels that are going to escort him home are on assignment. And so Jacob should have said, honey, sweethearts, children, servants, let's go. We're going home. And, and when he faces Esau, Esau, man, I was wrong. I did you wrong. I, I, I was another person back then. Oh, what have you? Just being honest. But then the name Jacob means deceiving or a supplanter or being undermined, or be, uh, underhanded and undermining. And that even though he listen, and I was telling somebody this the other day, even though we talked about this on our church line the other night, even though he, he's walking in covenant, there were still areas of his flesh that were governing his life, that were governing his decisions. Jacob, even though God told Jacob, I'm going to send you home, you know, 
God can't lie. If he's telling you he's sending you somewhere, he's worked out the details. Trust me. He's worked out the, 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 the issues. He's worked all of that out. Your job is just to go. But if you're still operating in those deceiving, manipulative, underhanded, undermining spirits, you want to still put your hand in it. And that's what Jacob is doing. And it's going to frustrate you at that very moment when God is launching and catapulting you into your next. It, it, that thing will frustrate you and shut you down and lock you down every time. Uh, and, and I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it to you in the word. So he divides his family and he sends them away. So my bottom point here, with one word, Jacob forgot what God said. Fear will drive you to a place of short term memory loss. Fear will drive you to a place where you have forgotten. You forgot, you forgot, you forgot. I think it was Paul said it to the church of Galatia. Uh, you know, he said, how soon have you, so how soon have you been so far removed from the truth? Like I'm amazed, I'm astonished you forgot so quick. I think it was the church of Galatia he wrote it to. But he, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that you were so soon removed. You've seen the same thing with Israel in the wilderness. God said, you you forgot all of the, that bondage, all of that uh, uh, terror and torment that you went through. How can you how can you be so quick to forget? How can you be so quick to forget? But we do, don't we? OK, so with one word, Jacob forgot what God said about returning home, forgot about the two angels, forgot about his double. Fear caused him to make his own version of double. Did y'all catch that? Remember, he was in a place of double. Now, God was doing something here, but fear caused uh, uh, Jacob to manufacture a his own breakthrough didn't that something jacob got jacob's jacob took the initiative upon himself to make his way home hold on all right so let's move on we're in chapter 32 verses 9 through 12 and i'm going to read this to you actually let me get pull this up I feel y'all prayers. I'm learning how to do my little devices and stuff. I'm so proud of me. All right, Jacob's, J Jacob, thir um, Genesis 32, and I'm going to read Jacob's prayer. I'm going to read Jacob's prayer. Listen to this very, you prayer warriors and intercessors, because those of you, especially in my church, you know that I love to teach prayer pointers coming out of the word of God. So let's look at what happens. After all of this fear, right? After all of this fear, thank God. And fear will do this, right? Fear will have you, James chapter one, verse eight, will have you operating in a double-minded double-minded spirit and that's when you got to watch it because that double-minded spirit is what the enemy will use to to disqualify you from the blessing what does james one say that a, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways let not that man think he shall receive anything from the lord right so whenever we're operating in a double-minded spirit and here jacob was operating in a double-minded spirit those of you deliverance people that's what this looks like this is what it looks like this is what a double-minded spirit I, I know what god said i've seen the angels but Fear is telling me my brother's going to kill me, so I need to move my family. I need to do this. I need to do that. And then here you go again. But let me pray. That that's you're seeing the operation of a double-minded spirit. Okay. And so let's read the prayer. We're in Genesis 32 verses 9 through 12. And Jacob said, "O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said unto me." Now remember, he re he remembered what God said. Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal with. And excuse me, and I will deal well with thee. Look at that. I will deal well with thee. God did not tell him, return to your country. And by the way, your brother's going to kill you on the way coming through. No, God told him whenever you are, are, are crossing over into seasons and, 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 and realms and dimensions in your life, God is going to tell you. You know, now he won't give you the in between. He's going to give you he's alpha and omega. He's going to tell you what the beginning is going to look like. And he's going to tell you what the end. Now, your job is to get through the hallway. Then that's where all the crazy stuff, the crazy stuff happens in the hallway. As an educator, we always have monitors in the hallways because that's when kids act a hot mess in the hall. You got to have a pass. Where you going? You stop talking in the hall. So crazy stuff happens in the hallway. All right. And, and so it's in between the seasons of what you're coming out of and what you're going into where the enemy will play with your mind. And so this is why you got to practice what Jacob did here is go back to the place of prayer. And in this place of prayer, you have to remind yourself of what God said. OK, Lord, first of all, he acknowledges you are the God of my father. I feel God's presence. You're the God of my father, Abraham. You're the God of my father, Isaac. And you spoke to me. You, I didn't ask you for this. 
you said to me to return to my country and and to my kindred and you said you would deal deal well with me so you have to be very cognizant of what god is speaking to you you cannot be confused about this okay and as a prophet which i love the prophetic ministry and prophetic people and the prophetic everything prophetic 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 but let me tell you something you ain't gonna get an old clear prophetic word when you get it straight from god's mouth himself labor for that because any word coming out of any other vessel has to be filtered through them, through a human person who, in many cases, needs some kind, some kind of deliverance. In some cases, maybe dealing with some emotional stuff. And that word from God has to be filtered through that. I'm not knocking the prophets. I'm a prophet. I love the prophetic. But what I'm saying is labor to hear from God for yourself. OK, let that be your first point of contact is hear it from God for yourself. And then if anybody else is coming along, let the word of God be confirmed by the mouth of two or three witnesses. So the prophetic word does not originate out of the prophet's mouth. The prophetic word has originated from the mind of God. So when you can you can, uh, uh, you know, cultivate that place. And that posture of prayer where God can speak to you like God did Jacob. Jacob didn't have nobody. Lord Jesus, who would, nobody prophesied and told Jacob this. Thus said the Lord, get ready, get ready. You get ready to go back to your house. Uh-uh. You got to get into a place for yourself where you can hear God and let whoever comes behind that bear witness. Did y'all hear that? That was a whole school of prophets you got in two minutes. Let whoever else comes behind what God said bear witness. And that way, your Holy Spirit, that's why the Bible said prophecy. And I was studying last night because y'all, uh, you know, I'm going to be teaching on this this summer, School of the Prophets. Yes, praise God. But, you know, the, the, the Spirit of God, the prophecy has to be judged. We need to make sure that that's what God is saying. I don't know what the, what's inspiring you right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. There's a lot of inspirations out here. Everybody's not inspired by the Holy Ghost. Some folks, you know, praise God. So, I, you know, what you say to me is going to bear witness. To what God has already told me. You're not going to be the first one to bring me nothing new. You can forget that. What you have to say to me is going to bear witness and testify to what God already told me. And that's how I know in my spirit that you are a true prophet of God, or a true prophetess, a true prophetic believer of God. That's how I'm going to know. My spirit will bear witness. It will testify of a truth that, yes, God is using. This is what God is saying. But no, you're not going to be the first one. Okay. So he's praying. And God of my father, Return, this is what you said, verse 10. And I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies. Do you see how the suffering and the trials humbled uh, Jacob? The, his trials humbled him. He said, I'm not even worthy of the least of these mercies. Jacob understood, I did some stuff. See, when you go to God for real, for real, not, well, you know what Laban did and you know I didn't really, no, 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 own your stuff, own your stuff on your stuff. I am not worthy. God, you know, I am a hot mess. I deceived my brother. I deceived my father. I broke my home. I broke my daddy's heart, broke my mama's heart. You know, I I, I, <laughs> I did a lot of stuff. So I'm not worthy of what you, what you said to me. Okay. And of all the truth, he said, I'm not worthy of your mercy and of all the truth, which you have showed unto your servant. I'm not deserving. God, you spared my life. You kept my mind. When I wanted to marry Rachel and the man gave me Leah, you kept you kept me from going crazy. You try to marry the wrong person, wake up, you got to somebody, then you lose your mind. You know? So God kept this man. He said, I'm not worthy of that. That was fruit. What I did, I was deceived because I deceived. And so what I received was fruit from my own ways. But God, even in that, you kept me. You were merciful. Okay? He said, For with my staff, I passed over this Jordan, and now I'm become two bands. I have become two armies. All right. Deliver me. I pray thee. Now he's asking for deliverance. Again, he acknowledged, I'm going through something. My mind is messed up. Part of me want to believe what you said. Part of me know what you said. But there's another part of me that's telling me I better run, hide, hide my kids, hide my wife, hide my dogs. Hide my... There's a part of me that want to run. There's a part of me that wants to run, right? He said, deliver me. I pray thee from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, because listen, I fear him. People of God, there are things I was studying and, oh boy, listen. Praise the Lord. Ooh, um, I can't get to that. You just have to be honest. Let me just, can I just say that? Just be honest and confess the areas that you have fear in. Confess the areas that you need deliverance in. Confess the areas that you deceived people in. 
be real and honest with God. He said, I fear I'm afraid of my brother. I'm afraid he will come and kill me and my family. This man of God understood what God, he was conflicted. He understood what God said and he knew the testimonies of God in his life. He could not, it was undeniable. There was no way he could, he could reason against what God, I can't deny what you've done. What you've done is of a truth, but also God, I understand I'm facing something right now and I'm scared to death. I'm, I'm afraid, I need you God like never before. So he's asking for deliverance because in the back of Jacob's mind, even though he was battled with fear and all that, he knew he still trusted in the God of Israel. So people of God, you're going to have moments when you do flip flop back and forth. You, you're going to have moments. You're going to have moments where you're like, Lord God, let this cup pass from me. Jesus, I don't want to go through this. You will have moments as anointed and as prophetic and as awesome and as lovely and as anointed as you are. You're going to have moments in your life when you're going to say, God, I just, I please. <laughs> take this cup. I don't want it. I don't want it. Okay. But nevertheless, right? So that's the prayer. Verse 12, he finishes his prayer. And you said, I, listen, and you said, remind God of his word. Lord, you said that you would surely do me good. You said that you would make my seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered. And so Joseph, Jacob was, was recalling this is what you guys do when you're in a place like this, you're in your hallways, you got to recall the promises of God. You've got to remind yourself of what God said. OK, now let's move on. That was good. So now we're looking into verse verses 13, thir excuse me, 13 through 21. Let me some water and all the kids in their room. Um, verses 13 through 21. And this is happening after. Uh, Jacob's prayer. All right. So after praying, listen, remember what I said? He's, he's flipping. He's going back and forth. He's going back and forth. Right. And, and listen, I'm, I can't judge him because there's been seasons in my life where, listen, one minute in the songwriter said it best. One day I'm up. One day I'm down. Next day I'm level to the ground. I'm like, I know what you said, God. I know what you've done, but this right here, Jesus, I just, I, oh God, help me, Father. Help me to understand my life. You do. You flip back and forth. Doesn't mean you don't love God. Doesn't mean you don't, you're not called of God. This man, he was a, he had a mighty assignment on his life and the half has yet to be told, but he was still deal, dealing with the human nature. There's a human nature and every, these are not demons involved in this at all. Well, the demon of fear certainly came in through his assumption that that devil sure did come in and started to navigate some changes around him. Yeah. But in his mind, he, he, he was going through the, this mental conflict, mental battle back and forth, trying to determine, God, what should I do? You said you're going to bless me. But, Lord, I'm afraid. You know, I'm afraid for my life. So after praying, let's look at what happens. Let's look at verse 13. And he lodged there that same night and he took of that which came to his hand, a present for Esau's brother. So, again, by this time, he's already divided the camp divided his family and and he's praying he's there by himself and listen the minute he gets up he he decides to to another pack another uh, presentation for Esau now remember the first presentation was he sent his servants to say hey I, I've got this wealth I'm not coming for my inheritance right and that didn't quite work out the way he wanted or he thought right next thing he you know Esau said I'm coming with 400 people so okay that didn't work that wasn't quite what we wanted um at least that wasn't what he thought. And so now after prayer, listen, after prayer, here he goes again. Here he goes. And that's why I titled this chapter The Paradigm Shift, because, you know, it is a pair. There are systems of thinking that needs to be destroyed. Did y'all hear what I said? There are systems of thinking that need to be destroyed in order for us to embrace what God has said and is doing and is molding and shaping us. There are systems in Jacob. There was a system of uh, 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 his his system of thinking, his cognitive system needed to be destroyed. He needed a whole new mindset. That's why if any man be in me, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. He needed a, that old mindset had to go. You trying to deceive, trying, trying to manipulate. We were talking on Bible on church Bible study the other night, Socratic seminar, that hustling mentality is you can't hustle in this. You ain't going to hustle here. <laughs> There's no, no hustling. It's, it's not going to work. You, that's not going to work. 
You're going to have to face it. You're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to stand up. You're going to have to be grown in God. You want grown up blessings. You have to be a grown up. You're going to have to go through it with a grown up mindset. Okay. You want grown up blessings. You need a grown up mindset. OK, perspective, the way you look at things have to change the way that you compute things, the way that you orchestrate things, the way that you manage things. It has to change. And we'll talk more about that toward the end. So after praying, he takes matters in his own hands. And my question was, is he trying to buy Esau's favor? Because now you put it together a peace bucket, you know, and is this what God told you to do or is fear still operating here? You see that? Did God, after that beautiful long prayer, and then some of us, I know the Holy Spirit is convicting you, you done prayed that long prayer, you poured out your heart and got right up off the floor and went right back to doing the same worrying and trying to figure out this thing and God has already worked it out. All that long prayer, you've been at the altar for five years, you've been fasting for 25 years, you've been in the closet for 30 years and come out of all of that prayer and go right back to the same mindset. Something has to change, okay? so. Is, was that what God told Jacob to do? Did God tell Jacob? You, he just repeated to God what you said. And not one of that did he mention, by the way, before you get to Esau, go ahead and send him over some peace offerings. That's not what God said. So again, fear comes through the door of assumptions. He's still trying to maneuver, again, that, that, that supplanting, undermining, underhanded mindset, I'm gonna win his favor. God don't want you to win their favor. You don't have to do anything. You don't. Have to, that's where man pleasing spirits enter in. God doesn't want you to be a man pleaser. He wants you to get along with people. You know, as much as life and you be at peace with all men. God wants you to 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 get along with people, but not to the extent you become a man pleaser, where you got to always give a person a gift to like you or to accept you, or you got to give them prophecy to like you. You got to buy them a new car, a new. You, you don't need to do that because now there's some idolatry stuff entering in where you're looking at that pers person and, and, and you, you, you erecting a throne in your mind, you know, and, and you're worshiping that person. That's what a man pleases. You, you're worshiping that person. So God doesn't want that. What God is going to do for you, he said he will give you favor unless God tells you something specific to do. Like he told Ruth through Naomi, go in, uncover the man's foot, lay on his foot and tell him what have you. If God tells you to do that, then do that. But don't. You don't have to add nothing. You ain't got to add nothing. No additives, no preservatives. Let's just let's just do what God say do. OK. All right. So after praying, he takes it into his own hands. And um, let's see where we are. We're in 13. Again, that's a long spiel. I'm not going to read all of that. Um, but I'll just give you some perspective on that. 200 goats, 20 he goats, 200 ewe lambs, 20 rams, 30 milk cows, uh, 40 cows, 10, I mean, all of this in verse 16 says, and he delivered them into the hands of his servants. Listen, why do you keep using the servants, Jacob? Why do you keep using the, ser the servants? That's not what God said. You understand what I'm saying? That's not what God said. But again, that fear is gripping this man's heart. And again, I'm not knocking it because I've never been in a situation like that. You know, I've never had 400 people coming after me. I don't know what that looks like. Um, well, at least I'm not aware of it. So I, you know, I can't knock what he's doing, but I'm just saying that that's not what God said. Okay. And so he says to his servant in verse 16, 16, um, he delivered them into the hand of his servants, every drove by themselves and said, go pass over me. In other words, go ahead of me and put space between each other. In other words, he sent three bands. I think it is, let me see where it is in verse 19. And so he commanded the second and the third, and they all followed in droves. And on this manner, this is what you'll say to Esau when you find him. Say, behold, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him, listen, with the present that go before me, again, operating in fear. So my point two, he sent three sets of blessings to Esau regarding him as Lord. He's a servant, okay? Man-pleasing, that's operation of man-pleasing for you. While he stayed back in the camp. So again, you're sending somebody else to do what you are supposed to do and it's not going to work. You can't, you got to fulfill your assignment. Nobody else can do this for you. So it's not going to work. So he sends them all and verse 20 and say moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us for he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me. And listen, and afterward, I will see his face and listen, per adventure, he will accept me. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all just hear the same thing I just said? 
Didn't you just come out of this powerful prayer? You prophesied to yourself. You testified. You bore witness to the spirit of God. You 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 recall the, the glories that, that God worked in your life. And then you went right back to fear. You went right back to allowing fear to govern your decisions. Let's see how that works. What was my last point? So why was he last again if he just came out of prayer? He gave everything to restore his relationship with Esau, but did he give himself? Hmm. So he's sending every, he, these three groups of servants with all this wealth and animals and all kinds of stuff, trying to buy Esau's favor, but he didn't go. And so I think that 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 asks, that that poses a lot of questions. You know, what about times when God wants us to show up? And, and and everything else comes ahead of that. And then we go last. God, no, no, no. God wants you to do it. Not your cousin, not your uncle, not your best friend. There are certain things, certain assignments only you can do. Don't, God said, don't send nobody else ahead of me. Don't have nobody. I need y'all to pray for me. Can you go to God on my behalf? No, you go to God on your behalf. Okay. Don't go sending gifts and offerings and tithes and offerings and somebody pray for me. I'm going to send you a seed because I need you to pray for me. No, no, no. Keep your seed and you go and talk to God. OK, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? there are times you are going to have to do the work. You can't just send folk to do it for you. You have. And this is what they did. He sent offerings to this man and say, hey, y'all go and intercede for me. No, you do it yourself. OK, let's go on. Did we tell everything. Yeah, let's go. We almost, listen, we almost, we're doing all right with time, y'all. I can't believe it. Um, well, I don't know. We still got a little minute to go. So here is chapter 32, verses 22 through 23. All right. So we just covered the part where um, Jacob sent three different uh, 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 bands or divisions of his servants to bring offerings to Esau to try to help buy his favor, trying to buy a relationship, trying to buy favor, buy a position. It's not going to work. So here we find here. Now, God, listen, now God responds. You know, have y'all noticed this after every time Jacob does like the flip flop, God shows up and deals with it. Like the first time he flip flop, God said, OK, I got you by yourself. I need you to pray. Second time he sends three armies. And, and let's look at what happens here. Now you're in timeout. There's some of us that's in timeout. Well, actually. The whole nation, the whole world is in timeout, to be honest with you. But yeah, Jacob is in timeout. Genesis 32, 22 through 23. And I'm going to read that. And he rose up that night and took his two wives. So so now let's back up a little bit, because before the prayer, he had sent his wives and family away and he prayed. After he got up off his knees and prayed, he had a brilliant idea, brought his family back in, apparently, and divided up all the animals and stuff. I'm sure he needed his sons to help with that. And his family is, is restored to him. OK, so after he rose up that night, he took his two wives, his two well, the family. Let me read through all of that. And he divided them again. You see how fear is working. Now you said all of this stuff. Now you 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 messing with your family again. They're already going through. They just left Laban. Come on, y'all. The, the girls just left their father. Rachel is getting ready to really go through it in a, in a minute, in a real hot minute. She's getting ready to go through something. And so you've got all of this. From a mental health aspect, you got a lot of anxiety in the camp. And you got the leader who one day he's up, next day he's down, he's sending off cows, he's sending off, he, you know, praise God, he's just all over the place. I mean, he's just all over the place. And so now he tells them, okay, y'all come back and let's go over here. And so he divides them up again. Let's see where we are in verse 23. And sent over all that he had. So he took them and sent them over the brook um, Jabok. Jabok. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Okay. And that word Jabak or Jabak means outpouring or an emptying out. So now he's at a place to where he 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 sent away all of this wealth and he's sent his his uh, uh, wives, his children, his family ahead of him over the brook because he feels like, you know what? I've done everything I know to do. I have nothing left. I'm empty. How many of us have been there? You've done exhausted all of your brilliance, all of your smarts and all of your intelligence, and you have nothing left. Like, I just don't know, I've done, here, here's, here's what we say. I don't know what else to do. I ain't got, I don't know, I'm, I, I just, I've done everything I know to do. How many times have we said that? That's a spiritual place called J-Bot. 
where you have emptied out, you have exhausted all of your human intelligence, you and your three smart friends. And, and you guys have just come up with all the, all the, the ideas and everything you know to do. And, um, and so now you're in a place to where you're empty. You, you have nothing. You literally have nothing left. All right. So let's see what happens. Let's go a little bit further. If you're reading with me. All right. And so he's left. Uh, let's see. So he took them, verse 23, and sent them over the brook and sent over all that he had. All right. So Jacob thought, again, as a good father, as a good husband, I'm not knocking him. He thought he was doing what was best for his family, but God wanted, should be God. Sorry about that, y'all. But God wanted Jacob alone. So even in Jacob's mind battles and mind confusion, mental confusion, God was still working in that. Thank God for the times that he'll still work through all of this stuff. You know, the times he'll work through all of our baggage. Thank God for that. And so God, God was like, you know, I'm going to permit this. This is not my divine will. This is not my, this is not my um, perfect will. This is my permissive will. I'm going to allow this. I'm going to let you send over everything and send over your people because I need to get you by yourself again. We, we, we already tried this and you prayed. And I really thought, I really thought we were going, we were making some progress. And lo and behold, you got up off your knees after praying that powerful prophetic deliverance prayer. And you went right back to try to manipulate things in your own strength. And so God is saying, oh. And so God is saying, you know what? I'm going to I, I, time out. Just send everybody away and I'm going to put you in solitary confinement. I need you by yourself. Why? Because there was a, a, a this was a pivotal moment in Jacob's life. It was this moment was so much bigger than Jacob realized. So, there are certain moments in your life that are greater than other moments, pivoting moments, shifting moments. Uh, 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 um, life altering moments and these will be the times people of god where you will you will find yourself walking alone where you've been separated from family you've been separated from everything that you know is dear and close to your heart these will be these defining moments where god said you know what Are you 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 messing with timing here because there was a certain time that god needed some things to to manifest in jacob's life and Jacob's indecisiveness was, was working against that. And so you'll find that in certain seasons of your life, everything is going to get quiet. And especially it's going to come on the heels of you trying to make a decision and you're trying to hear God and you're trying to figure out what's expected of you. And it's just not working out. You're making a bigger mess than what, what it was initially. You, you just, you, for the lack of a better word, and I say this in love, but you're messing it up. You just you you messing up this plan. God has this tremendous at the beginning of Genesis 32. God said, I'm going to meet you in a place of double. I'm going to repay you for all the pain, all the torture and torment that you went through in Laban's house. I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to restore relationships. I'm going to give you your own land. No longer will you have to live and somebody else's stuff. I'm going to give you your own. OK, I'm going to give you your own your own inheritance. And he and, and, and but Jacob is he's messing it up. <laughs> you know what I'm He's messing up. He, he just, you know, praise God. There are times, you know, I, I, among the many jobs that I have, but I, I run a T-shirt company and, and do screen printing and stuff. And so sometimes, you know, my kids and my husband, if I, have, especially if I have a big order and I'm kind of overwhelmed and I'm, I got a deadline, you know, the kids are coming on my husband and they're all for help and they, they mean well, you know, honey, can I help you? Mom, you want me to help you? So, so, so. And a part of me is like, yeah, I could really use the help. But then there's another part of me is like, you gonna mess this up, you know, and this is money, this is time, this is material. And no, I just rather just let me do it by myself. And so there are certain seasons where a mistake is too expensive for you to make. And, and instead of God allowing you to be around voices who will uh, influence you in the wrong area or you've got so much distraction. I mean, that's a lot of animals and family and wives that you got all this noise around you and you need to hear God. You, This Genesis 32 was a pivoting moment for Jacob. God was changing Jacob's life forever. And he had all of this noise. He had these distractions. He's got Esau on one hand with 400 people that Jacob thinks is going to kill him. He's got all this wealth, these animals, and they're mooing and ban and oinking and kicking and, and, and all of that. Then he's got his servants. They're bickering and arguing and carrying on. Then he's got his children. That's a whole nother message. And he's got these two wives and his women servants. This man had a lot going on at a time when God really needed him to focus. And so what did God say? Just just 
sit down. <laughs> Just sit down and be quiet. Sit still and let me get something across to you. Okay. So Jacob thought what he was doing best. He thought he was he was doing what Jacob thought he was doing what he thought was best. And God had to work with that. You know, sometimes y'all, God has to work with some stuff that if God don't work with it, it just ain't gonna be worked with. <laughs> you know, he sometimes God has to work with, with the mess. He has to work with the mess that we've made. And this is what God did in Jacob's case. He had to work with his mess. Let's move on, okay? So we can try to get out of here. All right, so moving down to uh, verses 24 and 25. Um, and a lot of people say Jacob wrestled with God. And you know what? I've even said it. I think I probably can preach a few messages on it. But the truth of the matter is Jacob didn't wrestle with God. God wrestled with Jacob. Again, because there were some things that God needed to get to Jacob. There was a mindset. There was there, there needed to be a paradigm shift in the way that Jacob processed his thinking. It needed to change. Jacob had this tremendous grace upon his life, a tremendous anointing on his life, and it just was not going the way God wanted it to go. Because Jacob's former mind, the way he thought, the way he processed, the way he 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 uh, you know uh, reasoned with things, the re the way he analyzed things was just off. And it was it was becoming a disturbance to the pattern of purpose that his life needed to follow. It was becoming as and some of us, the way we think, and some of us have had, and you know, some of praise God. Let me just say this how God is saying it. Some of us are still thinking in survival mode because of what you've gone through in your childhood or in your adulthood or in your relationships, and you're still stuck in that same mindset. Anybody ever seen that movie? Um, Lord, what's the name of that movie? Um I can't ever think of the name of it. But in this movie, and I often refer to it because it's one of the best examples I can give anybody. But in this particular movie, this dude was locked up in jail for like a long time, okay? And apparently he had been locked up in the 70s. And by the time he was released from jail, it was apparently the 90s. I think that was when the movie was made. And he was dressed the same way. Like he had these platform heels that had a little aquarium in the bottom. He had these, uh, um, what do you call them, bell-bottom pants, and they were like these the floral kind of material, The uh, um, one of those uh, wide-collar, um, butterfly-collar shirts or what have you, this big old feather rim hat, and you couldn't tell him he wasn't a man. Let me tell you, you couldn't tell him he wasn't the stuff. You hear me? This man thought he was the stuff, and he's strutting down the, down the street, you know, expecting the same response from way back in the day. And folk laughed him, they mocked him. I mean, they heckled him to no end because he was trapped in a certain mindset. He was trapped in that 70s mindset and, and he lost, there was like a time elapse where he just lost track of time. And by the time he was released from jail, he was still thinking in terms of that same outdated uh, uh, mindset. Well, that's what God was breaking in Joseph, in Joseph, in Jacob. God was breaking that mindset and he was saying, son, the way you manipulated your brother is not going to work in this season. The way you manipulated your, your father is not going to work. The way that you 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 handle your stuff with, with uh, Laban is not going to work. What you did back then, what you did before salvation, what you did before whatever, it's, you can't bring that here. It, it's not going to work. And this was one of the re one of the primary reasons God destroyed a lot of, of uh, the Israelites in the wilderness because the mindset, he said, you complaining and murmuring. I cannot have you bring that mentality into Canaan. You can't bring that here. And so that some of us are wondering why I can't break into certain seasons and break into certain um, dimensions of my life, certain dimensions in prosperity, certain dimensions in my career, certain dimensions in my relationship, because you still have an old mindset. You're still out to get people back for what they did to you. You're still out to Prove how awesome and wonderful you are. You're still trying to prove something. And I was talking to my husband last night. I talked his head off. But I said, one thing about a poverty mindset, when you have a person with a poverty mindset, and God knows if you ever give them a dollar, instead of them, they don't have the mind to invest or, or to, to, to turn that money, you know, to, to make a dollar out of that dollar. They'll spend it to try to prove to themselves and to others that they have something. A poverty mindset will always, you know, a, a poverty mindset is one that will dictate every it will dictate the decision you make over every dollar you get because it has to show people that you've arrived 
It has to show you that you've arrived. And in essence, that's the proof that you have not because you don't know how to handle that dollar. You don't know what to do with that dollar because the poverty mindset will not release you the capacity to invest it or to sow it or to plant it or to build a business with it or, you know, save it. A poverty mindset will have you use it to give you an immediate gain. And so there are certain mindsets that, that and I don't care how poor prophesied you're going to be a millionaire or you're going to do this and you're going to the nations. If you don't get rid of certain mindsets, you honey, please. You're not going to go. There are certain mindsets that cannot even go to the next level. You don't even have the, the mental framework, the conceptual framework to even survive on the next level. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so this is what God was, was dealing with Jacob. Jacob, you're still operating like a hustler. You're still operating like a deceiver and a supplanter. And, and I'm, I'm, that's not who you are. That's not what I've, I've brought you through all of this for you to still think and still act and still function the way that you used to. I'm doing something new in you, but you can't let go of the old thing. You're still trying to figure out this stuff on your own. You're still trying to, you know, stop it. You're still trying to fix the family on your own. You're still trying to fix relationship. You cannot let, just stop it. It's not going to work. And so this was the struggle for Jacob. And so God got him by himself. OK. And, and Jacob did not wrestle with God. We can't. How are you going to wrestle with God? And, and when the Lord gave me that, I was like, OK, Lord, I repeat because I, I missed that old revelation. Man wrestled with Jacob. OK. And so it was God who initiated this fight with Jacob. It was God. God said, you know what? I'm going to get this to you by any means necessary. I will, I will. And we've often said, God will fight you to bless you. And there's another message I preached years ago about contending for the blessing. God said, I, I'm, I'm going to get it. And God will fight you. You'll certain, know the certain doors start to slam shut in your face. And a lot of us will blame the devil. And we get the intercessors in a row, one by one, one by one, one by one. Pray behind the devil because this is happening. And it ain't the devil. The devil has nothing. The devil has nothing to do with this right here. And in a lot of cases, the devil has nothing to do with your stuff being shut down. God is shutting you down to teach you how to think. He's shutting you down. So God initiated the fight with Jacob because there were some things that God needed to get to Jacob that Jacob just was not getting. He just wasn't getting it. OK. And so Jacob had just tremendous destiny. There goes James 1 8. Jacob had this tremendous destiny um, within him, locked within him, but he could not pass over to the next with that same mindset, it just was not going to happen. And so there are a lot of us who are praying and we're fasting and we're doing all these wonderful spiritual things. And, and that's, that's awesome. But faith without works is dead. You can believe that. I believe God to do it now, but there's also some work you got to put into that. And that God said, you know what, Jacob, you, you're going to work for this. You, this is the area you're going to have that. You talking about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You want to work this out. You're going to go to work. God is going to work it out of you. And so at first, Jacob entreated God in prayer. Remember that first time. But in this season, God said, you know what? You and he, don't even come to me in prayer because we tried. We tried that. We tried that. You came to me with a beautiful, awesome prayer, very fiery and fervent and very effectual. And then you got up off your knees and went to the same thing. So this time, I, I'm not even waiting for you to come to me in prayer. I'm coming to you. And you're going to find seasons like that where God will shut everything away from you and he's coming to you. And you ain't going to God. I'm a father. I come to you. No, 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 no. I'm coming to you. Because you, 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 you're you frustrating time right now. You delayed, you blocked, you hindered, you detoured and you've gone somewhere in the spirit that the angels got to find you and bring you back. I've got all this destiny in you. I've got a, a certain time that you need to be at a certain place. And, and it's not working. So I'm coming to you. Let's read what the scriptures say. 24. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled, listen, there wrestled a man with him. So he didn't wrestle with the man, a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And so this was what it took. For God to finally get the point across to Jacob, I'm doing something new in your life. OK, so at first Jacob entreated God. This time God entreated Jacob and he wrestled and fought with him. OK, so the supplanter, it was time for that, that. The nature and that's that was the fight, y'all. The, the old nature of Jacob had to die 
and God had to kill it. And it took all night long, y'all. This was not an overnight thing. It took all night for God to wrestle and kill and, and, and to overcome that nature that Jacob had. So, and now we know, right? Because let me read this to you. Um, and he wrestled with him. And so now the man, and I'm, we're going to get to that in the next slide. The man was Jesus Christ incarnate. Okay, so don't be deceived. J Jesus, you know, it wasn't that Jesus couldn't get away. The man couldn't get away. It, it took that for Jacob. Jesus allowed the wrestle to teach Jacob a lesson. It should be in perseverance. That I, I'm going to stay with you. I, you know, I, I'm not going to let go. And some of us are like that. Every church you go to, every YouTube message, every Facebook live you hear, you hear God saying the same thing. He's wrestling with you. He's wrestling with you. And some of you say, well, you know, praise God. I got another confirmation. If you get more than three confirmations, the word of God said the, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, God is establishing his word. Now, if you get to four and five confirmations, something you rest. God is wrestling with you. This ain't no you don't pass that. You've passed the bearing witness. You to the point now where God has to wrestle with you to get you to believe what he said. That That's the that's the level where you're on, where God is wrestling with you. And then many of us that God will wrestle with and wrestle with and wrestle with until he breaks that nature. He breaks that mindset. He breaks that those those tendencies that we have to be controlling, to be manipulative, to be deceiving, to be underhand. God will break. He will wrestle with you. And guess what? You can't move. You will not be able to move. Jacob was suspended and God was right there with me. He said, we ain't going nowhere until we deal with this right here. And, and for some, for Jacob, it was happened. It happened overnight. For you, it may happen. My God, it may take two years. Wrestling with God for two years. Wrestling with God for 30 days. However long it takes for that thing to break. There's my dog whining. Praise God. Okay. So let's move on. And verses 26 through 28. Um, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no more be called Jacob but Israel. For as a prince, you have prevailed with God and with men. Excuse me. For as a prince, has you, you have power with God and with men and have prevailed. So let me stop there for a minute. So Jacob finally reached a place where he could not win. Remember, when you when you're a kind of person that's always used to getting your way and, and kind of, you know, getting over on people, God's going to get you to a place where you ain't going to that's not you won't be able to do that anymore. You're going to reach a place to where you say, OK, I give up. I can't win. OK, I, I, I give up. And so he held on to the man and the same thing he did with Esau at birth. Remember when Jacob, when uh, Esau was born, the Bible said Jacob reached his hand and pulled Esau by the ankle. Right. And that's where he got the name supplanter. In other words, he was trying to pull Esau in so he could come out. So that 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 you're talking about stuff happened from the womb, y'all, bloodline stuff. This happened from the womb. Jacob always had a nature to 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 be undermining or, or to be deceiving. OK, God had to break that in him. The same thing, the same thing he did. And some of you, you'll find the some of the same patterns you've had as a child. It, if God hasn't broken that thing, it, it's you're going to see it in your adulthood. And this is where you get a whole lot of crazy stuff in relationships. Trust me. And then a lot of it goes back. And I can tell you this from a mental health therapeutic standpoint. It goes back to mommy, daddy issues. And I know that's, you know, some people may get offended by it, but, you know, that's a hard truth. Some a lot of what we deal with comes from some mommy, dad or some childhood issues, childhood pain, childhood traumas that we never got healed from. This thing grew up in jo in, in Jacob. To where God himself had to fight with him to break those tendencies, to break those strongholds. He did the same thing. He held him. He would not let him go. The very same thing he did to Esau. He would not let Esau go because he didn't want to be last. He wanted to be first. So he had that, that um, what do you call it, a, a zealousness about him. You know, he always wanted to be first. And that's for pride. Always wanting to be first. Always wanting to be seen. Wanting the diatrophies was like that. Wanting the preeminence. I want the high seat. I want to be seen. I want all the accolades. Pride operates like that as well. And God broke it. So Jacob finally got to the point where he became persistent and said, I will not let you go until he blessed me. Jacob realized this was with the paradigm shift in his mind that, you know what? I can't win. I, I, I'm, I'm, I finally met my match. And let me tell you something. You will get to the point in life 
where you will meet your match. You ain't going to be able to get over on everybody. You're not going to be able to lie to everybody and get away with it. You're not going to be able to deceive folk. You One day, if God, if you don't go to God and get delivered, one day you will meet your match who will call you on your stuff. And that's what happened when God wrestled with Jacob, not Jacob wrestling with God. God wrestled with Jacob and said, we're going to confront this for once and for all. We're going to deal with it. And guess what? It was a painful experience. You ain't going to walk away from that talking about how anointed you are. You want to walk away from it in pain. Because number one, it should not have taken that long. You've seen results from this devastation all your life. At some point, you ought to say, you know what? Now, this this is just not working. It's just not working. But, you know, we'll hide it under tongues and we'll hide it under, you know, we know how we, saints know how to hide stuff now. We'll hide and seek. We, we have become the masters at hide and go seek. We will hide stuff in a minute. Hide it behind the title. Hide it behind the suit. Hide it behind the dress. Hide it behind the, the building. Hide it behind the organ. But there's going to come a day of reckoning. That God said, you know what? You will not hide. You, you, No. We're going to deal with this. You're going to bring it out front and center and we're going to deal with it so jacob reached a place where he could not win so he held on to the man the same thing he did when he felt like he was losing he started holding on and so jacob became persistent i won't let you go into your blessing jacob finally came to the mindset to where he said i can't win i need you to bless me i need you to i need you to i i, I need you God, I need you. I need you to show me how to walk this life of faith. I need you how to show me how to entreat my brother. I need you to show me how to be a father, how to be a, a husband and not keep re-traumatizing my family because I'm going through some mental warfare. And whenever I go through, the whole family goes through with me. I need you to show me, God. I need you to bless me. This wasn't a blessing for stuff. It was a life blessing. Like the Lord talked about in Malachi, that I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. There is a life blessing that comes with a paradigm shift of the mind to where you don't think like you used to think. I feel God's presence. I don't know who this is for, but God is talking to you. You, you don't think the way you used to think. You don't reason the way you used to reason. You don't, it, you've gotten past trying to manipulate, trying to uh, 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 be, what do you call it, hood, hoodwink and um, bamboozle people. You finally reach the point to where you say, God, you know what? Here I am. Give me the mind of Christ. Lord God, let this mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. And so Jesus himself had to wrestle with him to get him. Have you ever seen the, the, the movies? I hope it ain't never in person, but somebody's just going through like some kind of spell and people just grab them and shake them. Sometimes God has to grab us and shake us. He had you talking about being shaken. God said, hey, I will shake the nation and God will get you to that point to where you can't move. You can't do nothing. He's holding you and you've got to look in his eyes. you got to look in the word of God and say, God, it's me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa is me. Whoa is me, God. Like Isaiah said, for I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell among the unclean people. He has to get you to that point so that you can embrace and, and receive what God has for you. OK. He had Jacob had nothing. Remember, he was in in in, in Jabbok. It means empty, and he had nothing left. And that's where these experiences will take place. When you say, "God, I don't know what else to do. I've done everything I know to do." God said, "Good. I'm glad you finished. I'm glad you finished. Now, can I? Maybe I can have a turn now." It happens in that place where you empty out. It happens in Jabbok where I'm empty. I have nothing left. I, 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 I have exhausted all of my measures. I spent all my money. I've talked to all my friends. I've received all the counsel, all the prophecy, all the prayer, all the oil, everything. And nothing is changing for me, God. I, I'm empty. I need it. I need you. I need a change. I need a paradigm shift in my mind, in my life. He had nothing left. He had nowhere to go. He had no means to protect his family. He threw himself on the mercy seat and said, God, I need a blessing. So Jacob was the problem, not Esau. Isn't that powerful? Many times, and we'll do that. Oh, it's the devil. It's the generational stuff. It's the so-and-so and so. It is me. I am the man. Like Nathan told David, thou art the man. It's me. The time will come if you want a true paradigm shift in your life. The time will come where you have to own your stuff. This brings me to my next point. Okay. Uh, Jacob, excuse me, Genesis 32, oh, I lost my scriptures, hang on, Genesis 32, here we go, um, verses 27 through 29, we almost done, okay, um, God wanted Jacob to admit who he was, let me read that first so you can understand what I'm talking about, all right, 32 says, 
I mean, 27, excuse me. Genesis 32, let me read it, verse 27. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, excuse me, I think I just read that. 27. As a prince, you have power with God and have prevailed. Yeah, I read that. I'm going to read it again. And Jacob asked him, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. So God wanted, when he asked him, he said, what is your name? What is your name? My name is Jacob. That was a loaded question, right? Same thing when God asked Adam, Adam, where are you? That was a loaded question. Because I know where you are. But do you know where you are? Do you know where you are? Right? So it was a loaded question. What is your name? Of course, God knew who he was. But in Jacob's name, remember, Jacob's name means supplanter and deceiver. God wanted Jacob to confess, I am a deceiver. In those moments when we're wrestling with God, God wants us to, uh, to own the truth. Our true nature needs to manifest, not what you've been hiding from people and hiding from everybody, but God wants your true nature to be manifest so you can receive deliverance. And God wants to manifest it and it be confronted so that you can not embrace your next level blessings. So God was not going to bless Jacob. Right. There's no blessing for Jacob. There was a blessing for Israel. And that was the blessing God wanted to get to Israel all along when he came out of, from contending with, with uh, Laban. When he came into Mahanaim, which means two camps, the angels were there ready to bless him. But Jacob was he still had that same mentality. And so the blessing that belonged to Jacob in Genesis 32, 1. He could not get it until Genesis 32, 29. You see what I'm saying? How those mindsets can delay. Look at all the conflict. Look at all the warfare. Look at all the stuff he lost. Look at what he look at what he put his family through, y'all. And he's he's not so different from us, right? The things that God wants to get to us, but instead of us saying, okay, God, you know what? I know this is what you have for me, but this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm going through. But I know that you able, Father. So whatever you need to do, whatever I need to let go or whatever, God, have your way in me. Wrestle with me, God. Break out the things in me that need to be destroyed. Empty me out, God. He's in Jabbok. Empty me out, Lord, of everything in me from my childhood, from my womb, from my generation. Empty everything out of me that is standing between me and my blessing. Empty everything out. Empty out my mindset. Empty out the 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 the, the, the um, motives of my heart. Empty out God. The things in me. The things that dwell in my body. The things that dwell in my bloodstream. In my system. Empty me out, God, so I can receive all that you have for me. God wanted Jacob to confront that. We say it all the time. God is not going to bless mess, and God was not going to bless the Jacob. God was blessing the Israel, and the name Israel means God wins. Because ultimately he does. He always wins. Song said it, okay? So he was blessing Israel. The old nature had to be overcome. The old nature, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things have passed away. The old man had to die. And God had been trying to kill him for a long time, but he kept coming back. And God said, I'm going to get you to a place, son. I'm going to kill. I'm going to take, I'm going to deal with this. Because you 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 you're starting to frustrate time. So his new name meant God wins. Jacob prevailed because he never gave up. And that's the key. That's the key is not giving up. God, I know I'm a mess. I know I'm a, I have a deceiving nature. I, I know Paul said, when I try to do good, evil is present. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who should deliver me from this body of death? You know, when I, whenever I try to do right, it just seems like it's in my nature to do the wrong thing. You know, I try to think the right thoughts, but my mind is so used to thinking it's crazy stuff until it's, Lord, I need, I'm struggling in my mind. I'm so used to people mistreating me. I don't even know how to receive people who love me. I don't even know how to receive love. I've never been loved. These are all paradigm shifts in the mind that has to take place. For those who are wanting to get married, you know, you got to get delivered from hurt and pain that whoever your next person is, is not who hurt you. And, and it's not fair for you to go back and, and mistreat this person because of what that happened it's got to be new it's got to god's got to do this thing new in you otherwise god to give you your mate and you'll torment them harass them do you love me yeah i love you you don't love me if you love me you do something so and you got all this crazy stuff going on now you, you like jacob and now you're tormenting your family jacob's family was tormented those girls were already dealing with the torment from their father having to leave their place that they grew up in and now they're married to this man they know he's a man of god but he's got middle issues he's got some things going on with him and god is saying look 
You're raising up a tribe. This tribe will, will forever carry my name in earth in your loins is, is the incarnate Jesus Christ. And Jesus, my God, Jesus had to come out of time. Like Apostle Paul said, I was born and I'm, I'm an apostle born out of due season. Jesus had to come out of his due season. Jesus was not scheduled to be on the earth for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. But because of what Jacob did, Jesus said, you know what? I got to go down and fix this. <laughs> I got to deal with this because he's messed it up. It's not going right. So Jesus had to come down and, and, and veil himself in uh, ordinary man, which there are many theophanies in the New Testament, which, in the Old Testament, where Jesus came before his time. OK, because he had to deal with Jacob. He's like, look, you are my father in the natural. And I need you to get this right, man. <laughs> you know, because Levi is looking at the way you handle this. The Naphtali is looking at the way you handle this. The Le uh, um, the tribe of Dan is looking at Benjamin. All of these tribes, Manasseh, Ephraim, are looking at the way you conduct yourself, Jacob. You are the father of many nations. Get your mind right. So God wrestles with him. Isn't that good? It is. Amen. So Jacob prevailed, but he never gave up. So even when you know you're going through stuff, you know, he continue to go before God and pray. Lord, here I am again. Here I am. And don't say, God, I know you're tired of me because he's not. Keep coming to God. God, this nature, this thing, this beast in me. God, this thing keep rising. Up. Every time somebody give me a compliment, I feel something rising. Every time I get new shoes, I feel something rising. Every time somebody says no, I feel something rising. You know your stuff. Don't nobody have to prophesy. The Lord showed me. So you don't need all of that. Then you get mad when somebody will tell you, you know what's in you. Take that to God. God, there's a lying spirit in me. I'm still lying, even though I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. But God, there's something warring in my members. There's a war in me. OK, and if I want to walk into the fullness of what you have, for me, I got to deal with this. So true to the Jacobian nature, Jacob asked the man, what's his name? Now, listen to this. After all of that. All right. Jacob asked the man, well, what's your name? Jacob knew his name. Jacob knew who he was. So do you see that that deceiving spirit still there? Come on, y'all. That spirit was still there. And God is right there with him. And listen, now God deals with it. God's right there dealing with it. Right. I'm trying to wrap this up. So God, Jacob asked the man, well, what's your name? And the man, <laughs> he knew the man being Jesus. He knew that Jacob knew. And he knew that Jacob was operating in that cunning nature. Y'all know how this thing is. That stuff will come back to you if you don't watch it. Just because you've been delivered from something, don't get brand new and think, I'll never do that again. Never say never. Because Peter, like I said here, Peter was the rock. Jesus, the Lord said to him, blessed art thou, uh, Simon Barjana, for flesh and blood has not re uh, revealed to you, but my father has revealed it by the spirit. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I give it to you the kings of the kingdom, whatsoever you should bind loose and all that good stuff. And guess what? Right after that, here comes Peter rebuking Jesus. I mean, yeah. And then Jesus rebuked him and called him <laughs> with the devil Had to deal with the devil and Peter. It can happen. It can happen. You can still be susceptible to these influences of things that you have been delivered from. So watch yourself. OK, so that Jacobian nature to to be cunning. And well, what's your name? You know my name. Don't play with me. You know who I am. All right. And so he did not. The, the, the Lord didn't even respond to that. That's why for some questions, God don't even, he, you know the answer. Stop playing. I'm not, no, I'm not going to give, I already told you the answer. Well, Lord, why is this happening? You know why it's happening. You know why, it's, you know why it is. You know, for every situation in your life, you know exactly why it is the way it is. Don't even act, don't even try it. You know why it is. Why are you not doing it? Why? You know. The Lord didn't even respond. He didn't respond. Okay. And so the man discerned, quote, that Jacob was being cunning again, reminds me of Peter. I just talked about that. God did not respond with his name because he knew that Jacob knew. So he proceeded to bless Jacob, which was his original plan anyway. All right. Now we're done, y'all. Okay. So Jacob uh, confirmed. Listen, listen, what I'm going to read this to you. Jacob, let's read what verse 30 said. Y'all see why I love the word of God so much. I'm telling you, I, I just got to have it. I'm a fiend. This is Genesis 32, 30. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Now, right there alone. Then he asked the man, what was his name? And the man would not tell him. He didn't even answer. He didn't respond. Right. And then here we come in verse 30. And he says, I'm going to rename this place and call it Peniel because I've seen God. And I thought you said you didn't know who you saw. <laughs> I thought you didn't know. You, you see what I'm saying? See how we can play these, these mind games? And, and God said, I'm not playing that with you. 
the Lord said, he didn't even, listen, y'all. God didn't even respond. He didn't respond to it. So Jacob confirmed in verse 30 that he did know it was God in the wrestle match. And, and he sanctified that place and called named it Peniel, which means facing God. OK, so in, in, in my second point here, and I'm, I'm not done, y'all. After a genuine encounter, a, 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 listen, I said genuine because some of this stuff. I don't know what to call it, but it ain't genuine because when you have a genuine encounter, number one, there's going to be change. It, there's going to be change that you will feel and we will see. OK, you will rename your circumstances. Now, all of a sudden, remember, he's panicking and I'm in the place of Jabbok. Remember, I'm emptied out. And I have nothing now after this genuine encounter. Oh, this name, I'm going to rename it Peniel. This is a place where I have seen God face to face. You see how you change that? You're supposed to come out of your circumstances and change your circumstance. I mean, come out of your, your conflict, come out of your war, your wrestling with God, come out of your place of prayer and change. You're supposed to be a change agent, you're supposed to change things. So after a genuine encounter, you will rename your circumstances. The place where um, Jacob thought he was left to die alone became the birthing ground of a new era. You see that? Okay. So the limp was also symbolic of the wrestle. Again, remember, you want to see some fruit. You hear people say, well, I've been in the presence of God and you, I'm looking for glory. You know, <laughs> when Moses came out of the presence of God, we saw evidence. There needs to be evidence, people of God. There needs to be evidence on the day of Pentecost, which we're coming up on Pentecost Sunday in a little bit. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, we saw evidence of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, they, their lives were changed and um, they had a, uh, um, were preaching and all that, but their conduct, their lifestyle, the way they carried themselves changed. Okay, it wasn't just, oh, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and that would have burned a fire. We don't see fruit of the Holy Ghost and we don't see no fire. You know, no fire. We have to tell you to worship. We got to tell you to stand up. We got to tell you when to pray, tell you when to give, tell you how to live, tell you when to smile, tell you when to pray. Danny, Danny, that's not the Holy Ghost. Long. You mean to tell me you are filled with the third part of the Holy Trinity? You have the spirit of God in you and you have to be told day by day, week after week. You got to be told something is wrong with that. When you've had a genuine encounter with God, there will be fruit. And the Lord said that fruit will remain. We're not going to see it on Sunday morning or Wednesdays or whenever you guys have your, your, your fellowships, whatever. But that fruit will remain. Even when you're going through seasons of hardship, we're going to see fruit of the Holy Ghost. When you're going through being betrayed, we're going to see fruit of the Holy Ghost. When you're being lied on, when you've been cheated, when you've been backstabbed, when you've been left for death, uh, 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 we will see fruit of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus walked the streets of Calvary, uh, uh, Jerusalem, and was on his way to Calvary, we saw fruit of the Holy Spirit. He wasn't throwing off on people and kicking and spitting and cursing. We saw fruit of the Holy Spirit. When they tried to rail him with accusations, he said, I, well, I don't have a mom. I don't have nothing to say to y'all. I'm not even going to respond to you. The seven last sayings, we saw fruit of the Holy Spirit. We saw him heal and deliver a man from hell's gate while he's dying himself. We saw fruit. Paul said, death works in me while life works in you. We saw fruit. Why don't we see fruit when we say we've had an encounter with God? Oh, I just came out of the presence of God and the Lord slayed me and the Lord picked me up and dropped me and threw me across the room. And I just feel I'm on fire for Jesus. And then the next five minutes, you wonder like, you know, do you have a ventriloquist? Because you said something, but your life ain't lining up with nothing you just said. So we have to be honest. When there is a genuine encounter, we will see remaining fruit. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be on your P's and Q's every day. You're going to be human and you're going to have days when you're just going down through it. That's just life. OK, but I'm talking about your overall disposition as a believer should be constant. We shouldn't have to figure out, well, I wonder who this is today. It should be constant. The same today, yesterday and forever. Yesterday, today and forever. So the place where he thought he was left to die alone became the birthing ground of a new era. The limp was also symbolic of the wrestle. Again, we're going to see signs. There's going to, there's going to be some evidence. There's going to be a manifestation that you've been in the presence of God. Every and, this, and you remember this. You remember when you when you've had encounter. And I got to come off. This is well, I'm really out of time. But when you've had encounters with God to where 
it was life changing and paradigm shifts and, 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 and groundbreaking and all of that stuff, birth is taking place. Um, you will never forget. I talked about that in our Genesis 31 Bible study about those Beth L moments where you know that's that's the place where God visited you at a time where you were at your low, it was a time where you couldn't see your way. God showed up. You will not forget. And that's why he named that, he renamed it Peniel. And he said, This is where I saw God face to face. This is where I, I faced God. You'll never forget it. Nobody will ever be able to take your testimony from you. Okay. Every time Jacob limped, he was reminded of the price he had to pay for the blessing. There is a price to pay. It's going to cost you something. We say it all the time, but it will cost you. Okay. So Jacob literally had a new name and a new walk and things do change in the presence of God. Well, that is going to conclude our prophetic Bible studies for Genesis chapter 32. Very extensive. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I hope you heard God because I know that he has spoken to many of you expressly um, about maybe some of the seasons that you're in. Um, you certainly should have walked away with an understanding of what took place between Jacob and God, that it wasn't Jacob wrestling with God. God wrestled with Jacob. Um, you should walk away with the understanding of what your mental state can do to those who are who are around you, who um, you have influence over. Um, you should have walked away with the understanding of uh, the efficacy of prayer and that it's not enough to just pray, but you need to believe what you pray in God, praying to God for. You need to believe and then you need to trust that God's going to do it. You need to understand that. Um, what these spiritual places, the meanings, understand about the warfare, how the angels came as he left Laban and he has another season of warfare and the angels of God were there to guide him. But at some point, God said, you know what? I, I'm going to come and do this myself. OK, so if you were blessed and I know you were, I'm going to ask you to consider sowing a seed into the ministry. You can do that by visiting www.tlcor.org. And there, um, there's a, a app there where you can give whatever the Lord places on your heart. OK, um, you can um, stay in touch with us on Facebook. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, because once I'm done and grab something to eat, <laughs> I will have this uploaded to YouTube. So all of our if you're joining us for the first time, I welcome you. But all of our prophetic Bible studies from Genesis one all the way to this one is uploaded to youtube so you've got to kind of scroll through we've got like over 500 something videos um but yeah you can yes mention you can text to give that number is 980-222-0126 okay and just do what you're led i'm not one of those preachers that will beg and hoodwink you into doing anything if god is not leading you to do it you won't get blessed for it anyway so let him lead you okay um but yeah so um subscribe to our youtube channel and you'll catch up. I mean, now that we have time, you can catch up on all of those um, prophetic Bible studies that I've done from Genesis 1 through 32. Um, and so we'll come back at the next time. and We'll pick up on Genesis chapter 33 and we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. Get into it. And let's just hear what the heart was on heartbeat of God. OK, so you guys be safe. We love you. God bless you. We pray that all things go well. We pray that this word is forever settled in your heart, that it will take root. And that God will give it the increase. We pray over every relationship that um, that you're connected to, that um, that God will work miracles, signs, and wonders in that. But that He'll first do it in you. And if you're having a relation uh, issue similar to what Jacob had with Esau, God is 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 shifting you into maybe a new thing, whatever that new thing is. Okay, um, that the Spirit of God would would guide you and lead you, and that the angels of God will minister to you. OK, and that you'd understand the ministry of angels. They're not going to do the work for you. OK, but they'll make sure that you're strengthened to get the work done. All right. God bless you. We love you. And until next time, Apostle Delisa, I'm signing out. God bless.